Good to everyone. I was feeling so good. I had just graduated rabbinical school, and my sermon during my first week here had gone great. I had made it as a rabbi. I was on top of the world until my second week. During the procession, as I was walking with the Torah, one of our older members came up to me. She squeezed me on the cheeks and wished me a mazel tov, thinking I was the bar mitzvah boy. <laughs> it was a very humbling experience. And we have all had our share of humbling experiences. The time someone we looked up to, a, a boss at work, a teacher at school, someone we thought knew us and all the great things we had done calls us by the wrong name or the time our great new idea at work or a big project at school completely fails. We can all identify humbling experiences. That's easy. But what does it mean to be humble? We may associate humility as a trait of those who are weak or unsure of themselves. Yet the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, considers humility to be one of the most desirable qualities. In fact, the only virtue the Torah attributes to its greatest hero, Moses, is humility. If a leader as great as Moses was so humble, there is surely more to humility than the shrinking meekness we too often associate with the term. In Judaism, in our tradition, real humility is associated with a healthy self-esteem, with strength, and with confidence. To explain, I want to turn to Musar. Through meditations, daily exercises, and study, Musar is a Jewish method to improve our character. And Alan Marinas, a great modern Musar instructor, offers some important ideas. It starts with the belief that each of us, every single one of us, deserves some of our own individual space in this world. Space to be ourselves. Space in our relationships. Space to excel in our careers and in our homes. The challenge for each and every one of us is to take up that space. It all goes back to our humility. One who is self-debasing shrinks from occupying any deserved space. He sees himself as less capable than he actually is. He thinks so lowly of himself that he retracts meekly inside. He may think he is being humble, but being humble doesn't mean being a nobody who doesn't take up any of his deserved space. Doing so is not healthy for us or our relationships. For example, I've been in B'nai Mitzvah meetings with families when the child is running the show. Instead of the parent making the appropriate decisions, it's the B'nai Mitzvah student, the child, dictating how much of the service they will lead or how, much, how large the party will be. It's almost comical if it wasn't so tragic. Tragic because I've seen the eventual devastation when parents don't take up their appropriate space. There's no authority. There's no role modeling. There's no one to lead. There's only neglect. There's only lack of care. I observe too many families who suffer because a loved one gives up so much of his or her deserved space, there's too much room for the other. Too much freedom, too much accommodation, too many holes left unfilled. When I first met Rabbi Siegel and our oldest son was a baby, Rabbi Siegel came up to me and said, Brian, don't forget, always raise your children on LSD. What was he talking about? Who was this guy? At first I thought he was on LSD. But then in true, beautiful Rabbi Siegel fashion, he explained, Brian, LSD means raising your children on love, security, and discipline. And I've kept that phrase with me ever since. 
by trying to give my children the discipline they needed, the discipline they actually craved. But I can only do it. I can only do it by remembering what Judaism says about humility. If I took up my appropriate space as their father with confidence and with strength, stepping up and fulfilling my role as a parent. You can only do that if you don't think too lowly of yourself. On the other hand, our tradition is also about not thinking too highly of yourself, not taking up too much space. It's not easy. We're often conditioned to think too highly of ourselves. At a dinner to celebrate the work of a communal leader, the guest speaker paid tribute to his many qualities, his dedication, his hard work, his foresight. And as he sat down, the leader leaned over and said, you forgot to mention one thing. What's that, asked the speaker. The leader replied, my humility. Musar teaches that we can get by in life with a whole lot less pride we might otherwise have thought necessary. Not thinking too much of myself has helped me try not to be an overbearing father. Because one who is arrogant, one who is arrogant has an insatiable appetite for space. She claims, she occupies, she suffocates others. Every statement in her voice begins with I. I need this. I want this. It doesn't matter what other people want. It's what I want. She is so preoccupied with the self, there's no space for anyone else. And I've seen too many relationships suffer because a loved one takes up so much space, there's no room for others. Other family members have no freedom to be part of decisions, no openings for growth, no room to develop their own wings. I've seen the damage. I've seen the damage caused by an inflated ego and narcissistic behaviors that cause so much tension, passive aggressive behaviors and rebellion that unfortunately can last a lifetime. Over the years, there have been many times when I meet my wife and children at a kosher restaurant straight from work and I'm still in rabbi mode. I'll walk into a restaurant and find myself shaking hands and introducing myself to people at every table. One time I walked into one of our local kosher restaurants and sure enough, I began shaking hands and introducing myself to everyone there. I was in such a rabbi mode that I put my hand out and almost introduced myself to my own family. <laughs> my children and my wife have never let me live that down. But when they make fun of me, and deservedly so, when they make fun of me because of what I did, I think in a way it's them reminding me, don't dominate our family by being a rabbi at home. Be a dad, our dad. Take your appropriate space, but not too much space, so we can take our appropriate space as your children. No matter who we are, no matter what we do, no matter how important we may think we are in our offices, at work, in the community, it doesn't really matter because our loved ones need us at home to take up our appropriate space. There's a story told of the great Brisker Rav who was the head of the Brisk Yeshiva in Jerusalem. He had a student who was having trouble getting along with his wife. One day, the student arrived early at the Rav's home. The Rav invited him in, poured him a cup of coffee, and asked him, what's wrong? The student replied, I can't believe it. My wife is giving me a hard time because I refuse to take out the garbage. Can you imagine that she wants me, a Torah scholar, to actually take out the garbage? The brisker Rav wisely nodded his head and simply said to the student, let me think about this. The very next morning, early in the morning, there was a knock on the student's door. Much to his astonishment, the brisker Rav was standing at his doorstep asking to come in. 
When the student invited his teacher inside, the rob went straight to the kitchen, found the garbage can, and took it out to the street. When the student asked the great rabbi, what was he doing? How could he take out the trash? The rabbi simply replied, it may be beneath your dignity to take out the garbage, but I thought I'd show you it isn't beneath my dignity. Afterwards, what the student's wife said to her husband cannot be said in synagogue. <laughs> Every Passover, as I attempt to lead everyone in song, my wife and children love to poke fun of my pretty awful singing. But it's my family reminding me of something important, who I truly am, which is a human being who is far from perfect, just like everyone else. Thank God they're not afraid to do so. Because like in any home, they need an involved, confident, and humble father. Don't all our families need that? Don't all of our close friends need us as humble Jews, humble human beings, taking up just the right amount of space? In Musar, humility is not an extreme quality, but the perfect middle path. It's a balanced, moderate, accurate understanding of yourself that you act out in your life by occupying just the right amount of space. It's a crucial but all-important balancing act because your sense of humility does define all of your relationships with those closest to you, with your friends, with your colleagues at work, everyone. And Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook said it well, humility is associated with spiritual perfection. When humility defects depression, it is defective. But when our humility is genuine, it inspires joy, it inspires courage, it inspires inner dignity. This Yom Kippur, let us ask ourselves, honestly ask ourselves, when you meet someone new, do you ask them questions, where they came from, what they do, or do you keep the conversation all about yourself and only about yourself? The story is told of a man who takes out a woman for the first time. Over the dinner, over dinner, the man speaks for over two hours about himself. Finally, he realizes he's spoken for too long. So he tells his date to talk, asking her, so what do you think about me? <laughs> We've been on those dates before, and hopefully those are not our spouses. In this Yom Kippur, let's also ask ourselves, in your relationships with those closest to you, do you express genuine humili humility, genuine humility, by limiting yourself so you can leave room for others? When it comes to making decisions with those closest to you, do you let your loved ones have an opinion or do you dominate the discussion? And when a loved one or a close friend is celebrating a special occasion, do you keep it all about them or do you find a way to try to make it about yourself? My friends, when I sit with families at those difficult times to prepare a eulogy, I quickly learn if a family member saw themselves as worthy enough of taking on and fulfilling their obligations. And in the process, did they leave room for others? No one does it perfectly. No one. But we can all do it better. Because in the end, it's a lot about humility. During these sacred moments of Yisker, as we remember our precious loved ones, let us continue to learn from the space they occupied in our lives. And by learning from those who have gone before us, how much space will we take up this new year?